<laughs> All right, continuing coverage of NAB 2024. Jeffrey Powers here with Geekazine. We've got Dave here, and we're talking about black magic. And of course, you guys came out with a whole bunch of new stuff, oh, man. which you don't have here at NAB, which <laughs> is kind of sad, but you know, Hey, I get it. You still got some great stuff here, and we've got the the new switcher yes. that we'll be seeing in a second. But yes. let's talk about what we got here first. So. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we did make a, a broad range of announcements, uh, and it was a situation where it's a it's a you know kind of total ecosystem. So even though the products aren't ready for the market yet, having the announcements made sense because they're all kind of tied together, and most of it's revolved around our twenty one ten product lines. Yeah. But additionally those 2110 products um, are in our switchers and some of the other uh, integrations like we have here. This is our new uh, DaVinci Replay Editor. So it's an extended editor and it links into our uh, our uh, Resolve system. Okay. So we're basically bringing the power of our Resolve software into a broadcast workflow. So this is totally wireless, right? It is, you can use it, it has a USB-C on the back, but it is uh, battery powered and wireless. Something. It goes along with, with the, this is like kind of the bigger brother of our speed editor yeah. that we came out with a couple years ago. Um, additionally, our micro control panel for color grading has been redesigned. That also is Bluetooth and um, the, the new switcher control panel that we'll, we'll show a picture of is also uh, okay. Bluetooth. So what this allows you to do is quickly go in, set up into a, an environment and start working without worrying about all the cables all over the place. So it cleans things up, makes it easier for you to kind that's, of work remotely. That's awesome, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. Let's talk about that switcher that, that, uh, no, yeah. that that's because uh, of course I focus on smaller groups, people that want to get to that next level, they don't want to have webcams at going right. in. And these new products, it, what's great about it is this IP over HDMI that you yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, and the ability to say, okay, you can have the camera set up in your studio, but I can be at home Correct. and take care of all the switching and being able to do it halfway across the world. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where this line starts to come in. So that capability has always been available actually from our software interface for all of our switchers. You were able to address the switcher chassis, which has its own IP address. Um, if you have the internet connection capability, you could do this. In fact, that was done, uh, first time I was aware of it was for the Rio Olympics back in 2016. Okay. They, uh, the folks at NBC Olympics were using it that yeah. way because they had uh, lesser known sports that, you know, secondary or tertiary sports that they couldn't send an entire team down there but now, curling, you got to send a tall team down for curling. Well, I'm just saying. I, no, no. I, so this is a, this that's really the funny part is that <laughs> when we did the uh, Pyongyang Olympics, um, curling was the sport they used as an example because it has a dedicated fan base, but it's not as expansive as some of like you know ice skating things like that. But the fans will subscribe to the channel and they'll watch it. So mm -hmm. they wanted to cover curling, and because it's not a high velocity sport they were able to switch with even a half second delay because of the internet routing yeah. and able to switch everything you know, from, from Stanford, Connecticut uh, all the way back all into the Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So in and this and case, of course, I, I did have stuff with the ATEM Mini and the Streaming Ridge. Yeah. Uh, so we had, yeah, yeah. I, I knew we had some sort of IP, yeah. but it seems like it's now getting more ready for prime time. So when you look at the two new switches that we came out with, it's in addition to our Constellation line. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've up, up the ante on the Constellation line, and we've gone to 4K. So you have UHD capability on a 1ME and a 2ME, and we already had the 4 and the, and the 8 and, you know, 8K switchers. Um, that gives you a ton of capability in a very small package. The 1ME is, uh, I believe it's a half rack uh, yeah. wide, and it, and it mounts onto our universal uh, rack mount, and then you can control that with the new control panel. One of the things that we found was, our lowest price advanced control panels, $3,000, and you're buying a $900 or a $1,000 switcher, doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. Now, of course, with the, the TV studio line, that's a built-in control panel. Yeah. And with the A10 Mini line, that's also a full, complete built-in. But when exactly. you start getting into our Constellation line, those are chassis switchers. Now we have an entry level uh, or a, a small form factor that you can take with you and the switcher itself can have uh, feet put on the bottom and you can just set that on the desktop. So now yeah. you can set up using the 2110, it's RJ45, you know, uh, Cat6 ethernet cable powering the cameras, uh, sending all the data returns, uh, the video returns to the cameras as well as the feeds and you can control the cameras and lenses if they are supported uh, through the mount. Is that gonna be like a replacement for like uh, ATEM Mini or nope. is there plans for ATEM Mini to 
get some sort of network connectivity to do some of this. So the, the ATEMs already have that capability, right? Already have an Ethernet port in the back and a USB-C port, so you can stream out of the ATEM minis, which was something you know that was really powerful. Those serve a, a real purpose in that podcasting, in that streaming uh, sector, because it's an all-inclusive switcher, has the ability to stream, mm -hmm. has the ability to record ISOs for all your inbound cameras. So it's a super powerful uh, switcher in and of itself, but because it's an all-complete system, you just pack it up and you're ready to go. Yeah. What this new control uh, surface allows you to do is basically have the control of the of the entry level constellation lines, HD and the and the one ME 4K and okay. things like that, where you don't necessarily uh, want to go to that more advanced control panel. But if you're moving up to the two ME or the four ME in the higher uh, range of constellations. Mm -hmm. That control panel now makes sense. Okay, so but you still need a constellation somewhere in your right. workflow. Correct, because okay. that's what the control panel is really for. Is the, is the chassis-based switchers? Even though they have uh, panel buttons on the front, you can still actually switch from the front of the of the device. This is a way of, of, okay. of really a more traditional workflow. With the with the new 2110 uh, ecosystem, what we've allowed you to do is, is take in the in the uh, 810 mini line. We have both the HDMI and the SDI versions. Mm -hmm. You can convert both of those now into 2110 and put that into your ecosystem. How is that useful? Well, if you're doing corporate video or uh, live events and things like that where you have a temporary setup and you want to run, you know, just one cable powers everything, that's the way to do it. Okay. Yeah. Is my streaming bridge going to become obsolete or is there going to be an update that, that will uh, work with this? No, the, the streaming bridge still has a purpose uh, because it's a, it's, it's a dedicated link, but it's a RTMP um, connection. So it's 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 going to be an H.264, uh, okay. in, you know, in, encoded. Uh, Not uh, the system. 2110, okay. Right, so yeah. it's, it's taking your internet feed and it's decoding that back into 2110 and feeding that out as an HDMI or SDI source. So you can take that streaming bridge, set it up anywhere, and now from the switcher, you can address that streaming bridge. You also had the, uh, the television studio, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, the one thing that I saw missing in, in a few of the things was how the audio was really gonna be playing yeah. with 2110, so how does that work? So we released a new audio uh, interface, it's 2110 compliant, so it has the, uh, the IP connections on the back. Um, that will basically, that's, a, that's a, just a conversion over to that form factor and that, that workflow. Okay. Uh, has all the same features of the existing audio system, which we, we did a re, uh, refresh on that uh, last year or the year before. Okay. So it's a super powerful, amazing audio, super cool addition to be able to have that natively working inside of your 2110. Additionally, we enhanced some of the Fairlight uh, tools in uh, the ATEM line, so you're going to see more and more of that uh, Fairlight DNA coming in uh, and being able to be uh, a part of your production. Finally, let's talk about a little bit about DaVinci Resolve yes. and the new update to, yes. uh, uh, they're playing hockey, that's kind of just distracting me. <laughs> I want to I watch the game. Tell us a little bit about uh, what new offerings are in DaVinci Resolve. So uh, a whole slew of additional features. I think some of the highlight ones on the Fairlight side, we were just talking about audio. Um, we have a auto tracking uh, feature. So you can select a, a point of interest in the, in the scene and say you have something moving left to right, it'll auto fade audio left to right for nice. you. Nice, okay. Additionally, you can go in uh, looking at the script. You can select items in the script itself. It'll find the waveforms in the audio. You can remove items from the script. It'll remove the waveform or it'll just identify where that is. Um, you know, those are kind of like the high level, you know, big, big features there. But the real big one that is uh, our, our kind of, uh, and, and this is where the, the replay system comes in, um, is we opened up a replay s component to resolve allowing it to understand some of the workflow that broadcasters or uh, AV people have. And that is the ability to uh, send a, you know, uh, an alpha channel like for, for stingers and lower thirds and wipes and things like that. Yeah. Now you're using the power of Resolve and all the other features that come with Resolve and Resolve Studio in a broadcast workflow. We have a couple hardware appliances uh, or products that go along with that, like a okay. media player, uh, 10G and things like that, okay. that will enable the switchers to actually communicate with your Resolve uh, instance and you'll be able to use all the power of Resolve in real time. Are you saying that it's, it's recording and somebody could be sitting there doing the graphics yeah. and although it's not streaming out, Correct. it could be ready to be played. Correct once it's done or, so or rendered once when you it's done. Look at, when you look at the collaborative workflows that we've empowered in Resolve over the last couple of years, the ability to have um, multiple people syncing to the same project, because if you open up a Blackmagic Cloud account and you get a uh, library set up using the Blackmagic Cam app or any of our streaming uh, cameras now are, are included in this uh, functionality, 
I can address the project, and as I'm streaming from the camera, proxies or OCFs, they're getting populated in the project. I'm wow. now able to see those, and so I have multicam going on, let's say at, a, at an event, a live event, you know, a news gathering thing mm -hmm. or a concert or something like that. All those come up to me, and I can now look at all those in a, in a multi-view situation that I would normally broadcast and go, hey, that's, a, that's an interesting, like right now we have a fight going on, right? Boom, there's a, a point in time I want to come to this. Ooh, fight. But yeah. I have this, yeah, <laughs> I have this going on multiple cameras. I can now set a point of interest, and I come back to that on my timeline, and now I can select the cameras while I'm still recording live. Okay. I can now select a, a, a point in time, go back, and use that as a replay. Oh, and wow. I can, create, I can create a timeline out of that, do overlay graphics, and I can, I can stream that out while the game's still going, while I'm still covering the, the footage. I could stream that out as a as a update to you know one of my social accounts. Blackmagic. There's a lot more. There's a lot more. So we we'll <laughs> even talk about our we'll, cameras. <laughs> we, we're, we're crunched for time now, but you know I, I, I'd love to have. We'd love to sit down with you guys all yeah. day and just kind of play with that because it, it's it's blown my mind being able, not only being able to to have something working, but have it work remotely. Yeah. I don't even need to be on site. Correct. to do what I need to to get this hockey game going yeah. or whatever. And that's what's really awesome about this next couple of years. And then when you start bringing the AI into it, then it makes it even easier yeah. for a one-person production, yep. two-person production, of course, if it's off-site, yeah. to make things happen. That's awesome. Yep. So, hey. Thank you very much for yeah, your time. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. Blackmagicdesign.com is where people go. Right? Correct. Okay, perfect. All right. That's it. At Black Magic, we got a lot more here at NAB 2024. Jeffrey Powers with Geekazine. Go to geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, bell notification so those YouTubers get their wings. And until next time, you guys geek out and stream on. Hockey. Hockey. <laughs> Hockey. <laughs>